Hello guys, it's session will be in English. Hello everyone, my name is Victor. I am developer advocate, I'm based in Munich, and today I'm going to speak with you about Kubernetes. Kubernetes is one of my favorite topics because I spent more than 10 years working as DevOps engineer, if, if they exist. So anyway, just like I work with Kubernetes during, I don't know, the last five years, And Carpenter, in my opinion, is a very great opportunity how you can scale your Kubernetes at all. Let's see in general how currently we can scale our Kubernetes cluster. What will happen? For example, I got some new application, or for example, I have my horizontal pod at the scaler. So I got some pending pods. It's my first event that I need to provide some additional information, additional resources for new, you know, like for this application. Cluster Scaler understands this event, communicated with ISG, ISG communicated with C2 API, and only after that provide for you some new resources. But what if we delete not needed part of this schema, for example, Cluster Scaler and ISG? What if Carpenter can communicate directly with EC2 API, and if we need to provide some new resources, we can get which one is available exactly in my region, in my availability zone, and so on. And that's exactly how Carpenter currently works. It communicates directly with EC2 API and can provide for you exactly what you need, what kind of resources. Maybe you have some persistent volume based in availability zone 1A. It means like you have to create your new instance also in availability zone 1A. Let's see on to like a little bit on more real example. For example, currently I have four instances, and as you can see on these four instances, I have some free spaces like this white box and this white box. I got new application, again, new event, pending pods. I believe all of you, if you're working with Kubernetes, you saw the situation that's pending pods. What will be happened in this situation? Kubernetes scheduler understood, okay, I have a couple free spaces in my working nodes, and we'll schedule this pod. The next one will still in the pending pod. Carpenter calculate how many resources, where it should be. I mean, like for example, based in a separate availability zone or some specific type of instances, all of the constraints, and provide for you as cheaper, of course, as cheaper as the smaller as possible instances, which can befit these resources, which can befit this uh, new application. And just like scheduler got new resources go to new node and try to schedule this application, our pending pods and the new node. What will be happened if I don't need at all this application, I finish my TL job or I finish my, at, at all my application, what will be happened in this situation? So we delete our pods and exist two main approach how Carpenter can proceed with this situation. The first one is default, let's say default. It will run TTL timer Carpenter understands that currently I have one of the free nodes. Free nodes, it means like you don't deploy any application on this node. Diamond set is not your application. Diamond set is deployment, which should be pre pre presented on every node. So currently we have one free node. Carpenter run TTL, for example, 30 seconds, and delete it. But in my opinion, we have another approach as consolidation, which we'll review in action a little bit later, and it's very great feature uh, from Carpenter. What will be happened in this situation? Carpenter will run simulation. How many resources I need to proceed with the current amount of ports, with the current amount of resources? And uh, Delete, for example, this node. In consolidation, we have two, again, two main approaches. The first one is delete node. The second one, replace. Maybe you have the situation that if I replace this node, which will be cheaper, and move some uh, ports to the new node, in general, the efficiency and cost effectiveness will be better in case if I just like delete. But be careful, guys, be careful. Uh, please set up your port disruption budget. Make sure that you are not lose your application at all. If you're not familiar with pod disruption budget, I believe after this session, it's first what you have to read and understand how it works. Okay, so I think it's enough to speak about Carpenter, how it works, and it's time of demo because you're on the demo track, of course. So what exactly we are going to do? I have two different environments. And what's interesting, I will start with the second and explain why. So the second environment, it will be my high load environment. I'm going to run 3,000 pods. 
and split them on batch. Like for every deployment, it will be 500 pods per deployment. In total, it will be 3,000 pods. So what I want to achieve through this demo, to show efficiency, how Comforter provides for you, how many resources Comforter will request, and how many we consume of them. The first environment, it will be just like, we will review how Comforter in general works, how it requests new resources, we see the logs, what's exactly happened when I request new application. Also, we'll see how consolidation works in action. And also, I will demonstrate for you how you can deploy with Comforter a uh, situation when you have 50% on-demand and 50% spot instances. So uh, without further ado, let's go to console. And as I promised, I have two different environments. It's my demo carpet to start at my first environment. But as I promised, we will start with the second environment. And just like to demonstrate what I currently have in my demo environment. I have two different Kubernetes clusters, which I call them Tel Aviv Summit. Hello, Tel Aviv. Uh, 0, 01, 0, 02. And the first environment, like my hello environment, I'm going to run 3,000 ports. And as I promised, I will split them 500 ports per deployment. To achieve this goal, I'm going to use bash script. I'm going to run this magic bash script and show you what this bash script is, looks like to show exactly what's happened under the hood. It's, it, it's combined two different, you know, like arrays CPU options. For example, I have 200 millicores. For example, with memory options, I don't know, 500 megabytes of memory. And the base, you know, like random combination provide for me the deployment. So, Looks like I successfully run my first part of the demo, and it's time to switch to the first environment. It's like I switched to another, it's another Kubernetes cluster. Let me demonstrate what exactly currently I have in this Kubernetes cluster, because it's important to understand it at all what I'm going to show. So first of all, let's check how many nodes I have. I have only two nodes. As you can see, it's, uh, both of them is ready, it's great, and I deploy Carpenter. Carpenter required controller, which will, will precede your, you know, like your custom resource. Because when you create provisioner, it's custom resource, and when you need to provide for new instances, it will go through the controller. So let's check what kind of pods. Uh, sorry, pod. What kind of pod currently I have at all at all of my clusters? And as you can see, I have two pods. It's responsible for the carpenter. It's two instances of a carpenter. And also in default namespace, you can see some another application, kubeops. Kubeops will help me to visualize for you how many nodes I currently have and how many pods in every node I have. So I think it's uh, time to show something. So I'm going to deploy my first application. First application, it will be super simple. I'm going to run only 10 replicas, 10 pods. And also from resource perspective, for every pod, I'm going to request 250 millicores and 256 megabytes of memory. And also to save some money, I am going to use only spot instances. So let's run this uh, manifest. As usual, k, I believe if you work with Kubernetes, k is alias for kubectl. Apply minus f, care start, 10 pods. Let's, here we go. And let me show you logs of converter. Uh, I want to show you, it's like demonstrate exactly what's happened when we ask converter to provide for us some resources. What we can see, converter understood, I need provide resources, some instance, which can fit 10 pods, and calculate exactly how many CPU memory I need for this load. Like in my case, since 2000 something uh, millicores, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, you know like in Kubernetes we calculate in millicores uh, related to the CPU. But what's the interesting part, that uh, Carpenter said I need provide the resources for 12 Pods. Why 12? Because Carpenter also understand I have diamond sets, and I need some resources, some space for diamond set. And when Carpenter will request new node, it also will calculate amount of resources which needed for diamond set. So Carpenter communicate with EC2 API and got more than 100 uh, nodes is available and provided for you some of them. Uh, which is uh, with C uh, for CPU and so on. Let's see from visual part how it looks like. Uh, so we got new node and put all of the 10 pods on this new node. 
Cool, great. Let's scale this application. Uh, clean my screen and go into scale. How am I going to scale? I'm going to say for the same deployment, please scale up to 60 replicas. Let's do it. So, and again, let's open the logs uh, to see what will happen in this situation. So, we see that the carpenter is going to request uh, resources only for 45 pods. Why 45? Because I already have some pod, node, yeah, and have some free space on this node. And I can, it's scheduler understand, okay, I can schedule on this node additional five pods. But for new 45, I need some resources. And let's switch to visual part, because I believe currently we will see in action what this consolidation is. In my provisioner currently, I say consolidation is enabled. But if we look at the size of this node, which currently is creating, and Kubernetes try to schedule this pod inside in this node, as you can see here, Carpenter understood, okay, I have enough resources. I don't need the first node. Let's delete it and migrate all of the pods to new created node. And that's what exactly we currently saw on the action, I mean, like in, in the demo. So old node, I mean, like the first node we deleted because we don't need this node because we have enough space for port. We have enough resources to proceed with the current load. Okay, great. Uh, so looks like we finished with the first part of the demo. I'm going to delete our deployment, so delete deployment in fleet. Here we go. Uh, what's next I'm going to do? I want to deploy some application which will split my load between spot instances, which is cheaper and I like it, and on-demand instances, which is not so cheap, but anyway, I want to make sure that my application 100% will be available. How I can do it? I can create multiple provisioners, and I already prepare provisioners for spot. Let's look carefully how it looks like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say the, the first provisioner will be for spot instances and define the value spot. And for additional label capacity spread, I'd say number three and four. And based on the number, you can control percentage, how many instances will be created on spot, how, was, uh, how many of them will be created as on demand. Also, I define the configuration for kublet for every node, not more than 30 pods. So also uh, resource limitation, so on, so on. Let's uh, do it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, again, apply this manifest, kubectl apply minus f, care provisioner, spot. And the same stuff I have for on demand. Uh, let's me demand, I believe, yes. Uh, also, currently, I have default provisioner, and I need to delete it. Delete provisioner, uh, provisioner, yes, please, default, default, yeah, here we go. Let's double check that we currently have in our configuration only two provisioners for spot and on demand. Uh, let's get provisioners, provisioners. So we have demand and spot, which we currently created. Let's clear the screen. And I'm going to deploy almost the same application, but in this time, I'm going to deploy 600 pods. Yeah, but from resource perspective, the same amount, 250 uh, millicords, the same amount of uh, memory. But what's in interesting here? It's topology spread constraints. I said, please, mask Q1 for topology spread, which I created in Carpenter, capacity spread. It's that's exactly how I try to achieve. It will not guarantee for you 50%, 50%, but it will try to be the best to achieve this one. I mean, like, for example, we can see a situation that when I deploy this uh, application, maybe we will see, I don't know, like 10 uh, nodes will be on demand and 12 spot instances, or maybe vice versa. So anyway, let's do it and try to deploy this application. Uh, Kubectl minus F and cure split. Yes, split 600 pods. Let's do it. And currently, if I try to uh, show you how many nodes I currently have, this one, uh, yeah, please show me. So uh, we will see that Carpenter is going to request new, new nodes. Yeah, here we go. So, and some of them you already see that some of them it's on demand. I be, I, uh, I, see, uh, I mean from capacity type. Some of them it's on demand. Some of them it's spot instances. Is that how exactly we try to achieve, you know, like to split between 
spot instances and on demand. And just like to save some money because all of us like to save money in cloud. Also, if we look at the logs, I mean like uh, Carpenter logs, we will see a huge stream of logs that's what's currently happened. Carpenter understand, I got some batch of requests of resources. I need to proceed with them and try to, you know, to proceed with all of them. I'm not going to read, just like to show you something here, but show like how exactly Carpenter proceed with this amount of resources. Let's see from Visual Path how it looks like. It's just like in progress, needs some time, of course, because it's, uh, we, we need some time to provide new instance for you. For Carpenter team, currently the main goal uh, it's achieved one minute, 60 seconds to provide for you a new instance. It means like as soon as you request new instance, after 30 seconds, you will get this instance. Let's double check how many nodes currently I have uh, and try to calculate uh, how many of them spot and on demand. I believe you see something 50%. I'm not going to calculate with you just like one by one. You can experiment in your own environment, but just like as you can see, we achieve almost 50%, 50%. So, uh, and here we go. It's how it looks like from visual part, how we spread our load, how many nodes currently have and so on. And I see I left only eight minutes, but you remember I have another environment where I deploy 3000 ports Good example, ETL, like for example, some batch. I need to proceed with some data, and after that, I'm going to delete all of them. I hope that this environment is ready. I mean, like uh, Kubernetes and Carpenter proceed with this load. And here we go, yeah. So it's how it looks like 3,000 ports in my Kubernetes cluster currently, yeah, and so, I'm not going to impress you, hey, I see 3,000 ports. No. My main goal for you is to show how efficiently I use these resources. We know in Kubernetes we have request resources, we have limits resources. And if you're familiar with clusters of scalars, sometimes you can see that you request it and in general the request it's only 50% or 80%. Let's try to see the number in my current Kubernetes configuration. So to achieve it, I'm going to use uh, our like open source product. It's EKS not viewer, and I hope it will work correctly. Please go ahead, please, please. Uh, okay, let me open to another terminal and and please. Let me rephrase the page. Live demo, guys, live demo as usual, just like it can happen everything. But I hope as soon as I refresh the page, everything will work correctly. So, terminal, please. So, again, here you guess, not, yeah. And get to not. So, uh, what's, we, what's the interest in here? So, Two main numbers. First of all, for this request, for 3,000 ports, I requested 22 nodes. And currently, I consume, I mean, like, what's the efficient way how I consume this, all of these nodes? 93%. I believe it's a good number, yeah? And also, just like we can see how much it costs for me. Currently, it costs $26 per hour or couple thousands per month. So let's delete it, it's, it's cost too much. So uh, yeah, uh, again, I prepare a bar script to delete all of this uh, load because it's created by bar script. Let's do it the same stuff to delete this load. So let's do it. And what I want to show you, how quickly Carpenter proceed with this deletion. I mean like how quickly Carpenter will delete all of this node. We communicate directly with EC2 API and it means like if we understand that this node is free, we can start the right way of deletion. I mean like cardon drain, of course, it's Kubernetes, and then communicate with EC2 API and say, I don't need this node. Let's check from Kubernetes perspective what kind of uh, deployments I have. Please. Uh, okay. Uh, I hope you will see here. So uh, from visual part, we currently uh, see that Kubernetes is in progress to delete these ports. I believe you understand that when you delete a lot of ports, 
it's required some time to clean and delete these nodes. For scheduler, for Kubernetes API, it also requires some time. And currently, what we can see in this part of the demo, how quickly, as soon as we delete this spot, we delete also this node. And my default configuration was only two nodes, and why we, I, I need two nodes? Because I need to provide availability for carpenter. I have to deploy my controller on two different nodes. In case if I lost one node, I lost totally carpenter controller. And it means like I lost how I proceed, how I manage my node in AWS, how I request this node, how I delete this node, and so on. So uh, here we go. Only two nodes left after, I don't know, like how long I spoke about that. Maybe two minutes, and we delete all 22 nodes and delete all 3,000 pods. So uh, to summarize my speech, I want to say, first of all, the carpenter is open source. And the current version 27.5, uh, it's a pretty mature product already, more than one year on the market, and it's ready for production. You can test it and just like try to use Carpenter in your situation. And honestly, it's one of the, my favorite products product what we have in Kubernetes. And please, as usual, don't forget to evaluate this session. I really appreciate, do you like how I speak in English here in Tel Aviv? Maybe you prefer to see more demo stuff rather than slide deck, I don't know, like. As usual, we are, we'll be very happy to hear your feedback and thank you very much. My name is Victor and if you have any questions, super happy to answer to them. We have a little bit more time, three minutes.